A physicist just found out that living in a city is like living in the center of a star, but without the instantly melting and getting crushed. Anthony here for D News, and I love finding similarities between our daily lives and the way the universe works because it makes me feel more connected to things. And on a scientific level, if you can figure out how a system works, you can predict its behavior more accurately and figure out how to improve it. So something that's always fascinated me is the idea of cities. Like in the past, the way cities work has been compared to river networks or insect colonies. My favorite comparison is the city as living organism. So this theory has been around forever. Time Magazine published a story about cities as biological things back in the 40s. And in 2011, there's this TED talk from physicist Jeffrey West, and he went looking for the similarities between the growth of cities and the growth of living things. As organisms get bigger, the pace of their life decreases. Heart rates get slower, lifespans get longer, they run through their resources slower. But West found that cities work in the exact opposite way. Every time you double their size, the pace of things increases. There's more income, more wealth, more colleges, but also more crime more sickness. So cities aren't like organisms. What are they like? What sort of system can we use to predict how a city will work? Well, for the last few years, Luis Betancourt from the Santa Fe Institute has been trying to figure that out and come up with a unifying theory of cities. And he thinks he's cracked it. A city is the social version of the reactor inside a star. So. Stars create energy through nuclear fusion. At the center of the star, you have these intense pressures and temperatures of about 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. And all these little hydrogen atoms come in and they begin fusing together again and again in bigger and bigger clumps, turning into different elements until they wind up as helium-4. And as more and more of these reactions happen, the star just burns bigger and brighter and attracts more atoms. So Betancourt thinks that a city works the same way. It attracts people and accelerates social interaction and outputs, and the same way different clumps of atoms come together in a star, different small social interactions in a city happen in these increasingly larger social networks. And as the city gets larger, more of these reactions happen which sounds cool, but let's put the bong down and talk about what the practical applications of this theory are. So Betancourt's qualitative theory of cities takes the size of a city, and then it looks at its output in terms of things like patent applications and social interaction, meaningful output, and how all that stuff fits together lets him predict things like how productive that city will continue to be, how many people are going to move away, stuff like that. So he says that the most important things a city can have are the ones that make it easy for people to connect public transportation, a reliable power grid, shared spaces. So city planners and policymakers can plug their city's numbers into this formula and figure out what they need to add to keep their city growing meaningfully. I like it. The city is a star. What would you compare your town to? Be polite, your mother probably still lives there. Let me know and subscribe for more D News.